Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be offering my full review of the Top Don Pulse Q 40 amp electric vehicle charger. Now, this is a plug in unit that can deliver up to 9.6 kilowatts to the electric vehicle, and it will charge any electric vehicle sold in North America of speeds at between 20 miles to 40 miles of range added per hour depending on how efficient your electric vehicle is. I'm gonna be using this guy to charge a variety of electric vehicles over the next couple of weeks, and I'll also be putting it through the full lineup of tests we do here on State of Charge, so you can make a decision if the Top Don Pulse Q is the right electric vehicle charger for you. But first, don't forget, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. All right, before we jump into the review, let's take a look at the Pulse Q's key features. Dimension-wise, the Pulse Q is relatively compact. It's 12.25 inches tall by 8.75 inches wide and only 3.75 inches deep, so it doesn't come off the wall very far. It can deliver up to 40 amps, which is 9.6 kilowatt from a 240 volt source, and it uses a NEMA 1450 plug, although it can be hardwired. It is a smart charger that comes with an app. You have to download the Pulse Q app. There are two cable lengths available, 16 foot and 25 foot. It comes with the industry standard J1772 connector that'll charge any EV, including Tesla vehicles with that adapter that Tesla provides. It has a NEMA 4 enclosure, so it's good to protect the unit against blowing snow and driving rain. The operating temperature is negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit to 131 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 30 C to 55 C. It is UL listed, it is Energy Star certified, it comes with a three year warranty and it's made in China. We've had a few of our followers ask us to include where these units are made in our key features. So we're gonna start doing that from now on. All right, so let's get this thing started by unboxing the unit and seeing what Top Done includes in the box. So as you can see here, we have the body of the unit. It has a uh, NEMA 1450 plug here, short cable. That's probably 12 inches, if that, maybe a little bit less than 12 inches. It comes in either a 16 foot or 25 foot cable. This is the, I guess, the instruction manual. Also the user's guide. It explains uh, how to uh, pair it with the app and so forth. And it also has a mounting template here. Let me see here. Product specifications, and it has a mounting template for you to use that on the wall. It also has this QR code here, which is important. A customer needs to pair that with their uh, smartphone app if they wanna be able to use this in conjunction with a smartphone app. It doesn't have to be, but most owners are gonna to wanna to have this paired so they can use the unit with an app. Uh, it comes with the, this is a two piece connector holster, which is kind of unique. This goes in there and you use these screws here to screw it into the wall. These are just regular sheetrock screws. It does have drywall anchors for that also. The interesting thing about this is, um, I believe this is set up this way. This is for the J1772 connector, which this has, but then this unit could also be used with a Tesla connector. They would just give you a Tesla insert like this. So this, the way this is set up now is for J1772. They also provide you with these four uh, more beefier screws with anchors for uh, the main body of the unit, which um, this is how it gets installed. We're gonna go over that later, but this basically comes off the back. You unscrew these, these thumb screws here, slide it off and mount this to the wall. But we're gonna go over that next. So that's what comes in the box. Next up, let's take a look at the Pulse Q app. The Pulse Q is a Wi-Fi connected smart charger that allows the user to schedule charging adjust the amperage that the unit delivers to the vehicle from 6 amps to a full 40 amps, and also start and stop a charging session, as well as view real-time charging information and past charging sessions. However, that's if you can get it to work. 
I tried at least a dozen times to link the unit to my app, and I was actually successful twice. However, each time it did pair, as you can see here, the serial number on the unit is linked to the app. The unit still remained offline and wouldn't connect to the vehicle and show any type of charging data, even while I was using it to charge my vehicles. So I called the tech support number and was directed to leave a message, but was never called back. However, I was able to have an email exchange with Top Don, and they offered instructions on how to reset the unit, which I did. I also unplugged it numerous times, just trying to reboot it, but nothing worked. Therefore, I can't offer a review of the app. Installing the Pulse Q is very simple. It comes with the mounting bracket already attached to the back. But let's first take a look at the plug. It comes with a NEMA 1450 plug here. And as you can tell, it's not a very long cable. So if you're going to mount it where the uh, unit is on the wall here and the outlet is below, you wanna make sure that your electrician installs the outlet ground down because the ground pin is gonna be on the bottom of the outlet. Sometimes the ground pins are on the top, depends on how you're gonna mount it. You could, however, mount it like this. And in that case, the um, uh, ground pin is gonna be up. But if that's the case, you're gonna install your NEMA 1450 outlet somewhere around maybe 48 inches from the ground because you're gonna want this somewhere around here. The top of this unit, you're gonna want somewhere to be about five feet from the ground. Uh, and in that case, the outlet's gonna be right about here. Or you can have the outlet mounted lower down here. In that case, it's gonna be probably around 38 or 40 inches from the floor. Now, as far as the mounting goes, as I said, the mounting bracket comes attached. What you have to do first is unscrew these two thumb screws on the bottom of the unit. Once those are unscrewed, this pops off. Now this is your wall mounting bracket here. As you can see there's four holes on the corner. You use the um, provided screws with anchors to mount this to the wall, but I prefer to see if you could find at least one stud for at least two of these holes because it's always best to mount your electric vehicle charging equipment directly to a wall stud. It gives it a more secure um, anchored. You never know uh, what's gonna happen. I've seen people um, rip these off the wall uh, if they trip over their cable when they're getting to their car because it was just mounted with drywall anchor. So see if you can find a stud. Uh, but in any event, it does come with this um, mounting template here. If you want to use this, you can put it on the wall exactly where you want and it gives you the exact location of the four screws. Once that's mounted on the wall here like this, then you're going to put the unit on it, attach these two uh, thumb screws, and you're good to go. So let's uh, mount this to the wall and take a look at the unit once it's up on the wall. Once you've mounted the bracket on the wall, you simply take the body of the unit, put it in the slot, slide it down, and then reattach the two thumb screws at the bottom corner, and you're good to go. Once you've installed the body of the unit, you then need to install the remote connector holster. You can put this anywhere you want in the garage. It doesn't have to be right next to the unit like I have it here. A lot of people like to install this, say, on the sidewall of their garage, right near their charge port, so they can just unplug the vehicle and then holster the connector. To install this, there's four screws that are provided that you screw in through both pieces of the unit. As, as if you remember, this is a two-piece unit. Now, Top Down also includes a mounting template here, so you can put this on the wall for your four screws on this. Again, I always recommend, see if you can find a stud because this is gonna be heavy. You're gonna be pulling on the cable, uh, especially if you have the 25 foot long cable, that's gonna be even heavier. Uh, and the only other thing I wanna point out is this insert that um, goes inside and then you screw these four screws um, right through the wall mounting part of the bracket. There's only one proper way for you, for you to install it. You have to have the connector uh, 
locking tab on top of the unit. Um, it'll fit either way, so it's easy to put this thing on incorrectly. You wanna make sure that the plastic piece that's on top of the connector holster is on top, and that on the bottom is the part that has like this um, little piece that sticks out, and that's for the bottom of the connector. It's, it's really a, um, a guide, so you're supposed to kind of find that and then slide the connector in to lock it. So make sure when you put that in, you have it facing the correct way. Otherwise, you're gonna have to unscrew everything, flip it around, <laughs> and screw it back into the wall. What if you want the unit hardwired, which if you watch this channel, I recommend always hardwiring your EV charging equipment. It's just a better, safer way to charge your EV and it just reduces possible failure points. The uh, Top Done Pulse Q is really easy to convert to a hardwired unit. What you wanna do is sit the unit on its face and you take a look at the back here. There's four screws here and this plastic cover. We need to unscrew those four screws we do that now. Pop the cover off, and that exposes the wiring to where the NEMA 1450 is wired, right here. So basically your electrician is gonna unscrew these, pull it out, and then hardwire the wire directly in through the same inlet. Piece of cake couldn't be any simpler. Um, again, uh, I know a lot of people like the plug-in units, but if you haven't yet, check out my video on EV charging safety and how we're having a lot of problems with the NEMA 1450 outlets just because they're just not designed for the duty cycle of electric vehicle charging. I always recommend you know, hiring a qualified licensed electrician, particularly one that's an EV charging specialist, like my channel sponsor over here, Qmerit. It's one of the reasons why I partnered with Qmerit. Qmerit has a network of licensed electricians that specialize in installing electric vehicle charging equipment. And why do you need a specialist for your EV charging equipment? Can't any electrician pull a permit and do this? Yeah, they can. Any electrician can. And chances are many of them are going to do a fine job, but not all of them. And, you know, with any industry, there's people that do really good jobs, there's people that don't. And EV charging is different than any other electrical appliance that you have installed in your house. It pulls more current than the rest of your house does while it's charging. And you ask it to do that sometimes every day for many continuous hours. So, you know, hardwiring just reduces a possible failure point. You're not going to be taking this off the wall, plugging it and unplugging it, take it different places, have it permanently mounted and get yourself a portable charger if you really want to have something in the back or in your trunk just to be safe when you're on the road if you need to plug in. Hardwiring is much better than plug-in units and that's why we recommend it here at State of Charge. It's time for the Pulse Q's cable deep freeze test. I put the unit in this commercial freezer 24 hours ago to give it a nice deep freeze and simulate how it would be if this was mounted outside in a very cold area during the winter months. We do this test to see how bendable and flexible the cable is when it gets cold. So let's take a look and see just how cold it is in this freezer right now. negative 15.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, this is uh, simulating a nice cold day. Well, actually the timing is just right because we're getting this Arctic cold front through this area now. And we're gonna have temperatures here close to zero degrees Fahrenheit within the next couple of days. So this isn't far off from what I would be witnessing here if this were mounted outside my house. All right, so let's take her out and see how she does. So as you can see, I always wrap the units up with the cable in small loops. Now I'm gonna cut it open and uh, or cut the cable loose and then see if it will unravel and bend easily. Okay, and Immediately, I am seeing that's not gonna be the case. It's not gonna <laughs> unravel and bend easily. This is frozen really badly. All right, I got it on the wall. This is like, it's almost like a spring it's coiled up so badly. Look at that. That is not what you wanna see. 
This, if this was plugged into your car overnight and then you wanna unplug it and then put it uh, back up on your connector holster, this is, God, this might be the worst. <laughs> I said that recently about the, uh, the cable on the Autel Maxi charger, but that only held the crown for a couple of weeks because I think we have a new winner on the worst cold weather performing cable that there is. This is just, oh man, it is frozen solid. So as you can see, what you want is the cable to kind of be floppy once it comes out and, and nice and bendable. This really remained in the position that I coiled it up. I have to like <clears throat> do this to get it straight and then and look, <laughs> it doesn't even want to stay on the wall. Um, so yeah, look at this. See that, like I said, that is not what you want. You don't want the cable to be able to, it's so frozen that it'll actually hold the connector up like that. You want it to flop down. Uh, and you know, there are cables that perform very well. The ChargePoint Home Flex, for instance, um, I always refer to that one because so far that's had the best cold weather cable performance. When that comes out of the freezer at the same temperature, the cable is, is, is practically as, as, as easy to manage as it is right now at room temperature. And uh, you know, it's, it has all to do with the, the jacket, really. This jacket must be more plasticky than rubberized and uh, it just, it is frozen solid. Okay, so that's a big fail on the uh, cable deep freeze test. Now we're gonna try out the connector drop test. While it's still cold, we drop the connector on this hard concrete floor five times from about chest or waist high just to see if it can hold up because let's face it, you're gonna drop the connector from time to time. So let's give that a try now. Five, all right. No damage, everything's fine, didn't break. Uh, I didn't think it was gonna because this is, um, these uh, Duocita is what the name of the brand connectors. Uh, these are used on other EVSC that I've tested before and they seem like they're built pretty well and strong. So, uh, you know, it's, um, it's a, it's a well-made connector. I don't necessarily love the grip. It doesn't have any rubberized grip, uh, but it's not a terrible connector. It does have a nice um, like bevels in here for your fingers to, to fit into. And it does have some ridges on the side of the connector, which give it a, a decent feel. So this is probably um, uh, slightly above average as far as connectors, as far as I'm concerned, as far as their, their grip and their feel. It's a well-made connector. So uh, I think this is uh, you know, not going to lose any points in our charger rater as uh, it will for the cable. Though that ca that was a that was a major fail, and it's going to uh, it's definitely going to cost us a point in our charger rater rating system. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the unit. I like its compact size. It's only about 12 inches tall and somewhere a little more than eight inches wide. So it's a nice compact unit. I like when units are compact and don't come off the wall much. This only comes off the wall, I think about three and a half inches. I did the uh, dimensions earlier, but it's nice and tight and compact. I like that. The cable is available in either a 16 foot length or 25 foot length, which is good. I like when they offer two different sizes. I would not recommend getting the 16 foot length unless you know where you're gonna be installing it. You don't have to move, move much because 16 feet does not even reach across an average two car garage. And you know, it's, I, I find cables under 20 feet virtually useless for a lot of people. So I'd recommend getting the 25 foot cable. However, it's a hundred dollars more. When these chargers have shorter and longer size cables, they usually cost about $50 more for the longer cable. This is a lot, a hundred dollars is a lot for the extra nine feet. The only problem with that is I think it's necessary and I, I recommend getting the longer cable. As I said, unless you absolutely know you're never gonna use it. Um, the connector I talked about earlier uh, is a, it's a nice connector. It has this rubber cap, which is nice to, to um, uh, cover the pins. If you're not gonna holster your connector, uh, make sure you put this uh, cover on because you don't want 
dirt and moisture getting in on these pins, over time it's gonna foul them and it'll cause the connector to fail. Um, so uh, if you're not gonna holster it, make sure you use that. Now, as far as the, hol the holster goes, this is a nice remote uh, connector holster. It has a nice deep ledge on the top. So you could wrap the cable as many times as you want and it's not gonna fall over. Some of these remote connector holsters only have a little lip on the top. And if you wrap the cable more than two or three times, it starts falling off. So this is a nice job here and it also is nice and deep. And um, what's important about that is if it is snowing outside, you have this mounted outside, you know, the whole front half of the connector is gonna be covered and give it a little bit extra protection. So that, that works there. Um, you know, again, I'd love to see a little LED light in here. I, I have some broken record. I talk about that all the time when we do these reviews, but it doesn't have one. Uh, cable wise, so we saw the uh, cable deep freeze test didn't perform very well. Part of that is probably uh, because it's very thick cable. I measured it and it's more than 20 millimeters thick and that's on the thick side for our cables here. Now that's a 40 amp unit. Uh, if you go right next to it here, that's an 80 amp charger for the, the Ford Charge Station Pro and its cable's actually thinner. This cable here was a little more than 20 millimeters and then I measured the uh, Ford Charge Station Pros and it's slightly under 20 millimeters. So not much of a difference, but that cable's actually thinner and it has to deliver twice the power. So that's part of the reason why this didn't do well in the cable deep freeze test. But the, the real reason is what the outer jacket of the cable is made of. And uh, if it's, if it's um, not very rubberized, that's when they're, it's gonna freeze up stiff like a garden hose. And you, I, if you have garden hoses, you'll know you buy the cheap ones that cost like 10 bucks and they're plastic. They just freeze when it's cold and you, you pick them up and they all, they come in just one loop and you can't even bend it. But if you get a good rubber garden hose, uh, even when it's cold, it, it's nice and, and, and floppy and bendable. So that's what you want with your cables. Now I've been using this guy for the last uh, about two weeks now to charge my Rivian R1T and my uh, Ford uh, Lightning. And uh, as advertised, it delivers the full 40 amps. So I'm charging them both at about nine and a half kilowatts. So it does deliver the power that it's supposed to. However, it did fail one of my tests, which is unusual. Very few units fail this one test. I do the automatic restart test where I'm charging my vehicle and then I'll go to my circuit breaker and shut off the circuit to simulate a power outage. And then uh, wait a minute or two and then I turn on the circuit breaker and what should happen is after 30 seconds or a minute or so, the car should start charging again. And uh, on both my Lightning and my Rivian R1T, it didn't happen. Actually, I, I tested it with a Tesla also because my friend's Tesla was here. And uh, on none of those vehicles did they automatically start uh, charging. So then, uh, you know, I've done this with all my units here. I, I immediately then plugged in uh, the Ford Charge Station Pro to the vehicles, did the same thing, shut the circuit off, turned it back on, and after about 30 seconds, they both started recharging. So it's definitely the unit. For some reason, um, this will not do automatic restart. That, and that's a big fail because if you have a power outage in the middle of the night, the power could just flicker and just shut off for, you know, a couple seconds. Your car will stop charging and it won't restart. So you'll get up in the morning and it won't be charged. So uh, that's uh, kind of a big thing and it's gonna lose a point on our charger rater for that. So I do wanna point out that the PulseQ does work just fine without the app. I've been using it for a few weeks as sort of a non-smart charger. But what's the point of paying for something if you don't then get to use the features? However, these things do happen and I have received chargers in the past where I had a very similar problem and they had to send out another unit in order for it to work. And I have seen a lot of good reviews for the Pulse Q on Amazon and many of the people pointed to the fact that they liked the app. So obviously it must work. So while this will hurt the unit in the scoring, it's not gonna really cripple its score because I would assume that I just got a bad unit. So talk about scoring. It's time to rate the Pulse Q. And for that, we first turn to our Charger Raider, the point-based system before I offer my thoughts. So let's go to the Charger Raider now and see how well the Pulse Q did. 
First, we're gonna take a look at the cost and value category. For cost, I'm gonna use the cost of the 25 foot cable because as I mentioned earlier, this comes in a 16 foot cable and a 25 foot cable. The 25 foot cable is the one I would recommend people buying. I think 16 feet is just not long enough for most customers. In that case, it costs $549, so it gets one point for the cost line. As far as value goes, I'm going to give it no points here because I'm gonna say it's an average value for what it offers, giving it a total of 16 points for the cost and value category. Next up, let's look at power and weatherproofing rating. It puts out 40 amps, so it gets no points for that. It does have in-app adjustable power, although I wasn't able to do that, but we're gonna give it the point for that because it should work. The weatherproof rating, it is a NEMA 4 rated unit, which is good and it gets two extra points for that. Is it Energy Star certified? Yes, it is, so it gets a point for that. Automatic restart, it failed our automatic restart test, so it's gonna lose a point for that. And it's gonna finish up the power and weatherproof rating category with 18 points. Next up, let's take a look at construction and durability. We're gonna give it one point for the connector holster because I think it's a good connector holster. I actually like the remote connector holster that they offer here. Cable length, that's gonna get two points because we are using the 25 foot cable here as the one we're testing. It, it lost a point for the cost, so now it's gonna gain points because the cable is a little bit longer. Two points there. Cable pliability, it's gonna lose a point here because the Cold weather cable test was kind of a disaster. We're gonna give it a poor rating and take away a point. Robust construction, it's an average average construction, I believe, and uh, not gonna get any points. It's not gonna lose any points for that. For removability, again, it's not going to get any points because it's simple. It doesn't have a nice security lock that I like to see on some of the units. Um, you could just unscrew the thumbnails and just take this thing off the wall if you wanted to. Uh, ease of installation, it's not gonna lose any points, so zero there. It'll finish up the construction and durability category with 17 points. Next up, smart, non-smart category. It does get two points because it is a smart charger. It is not power sharing capable. It can't share power between multiple units and share a circuit. It is not Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant compatible, so it has no points there. Does it store charging record data? And we're gonna give it the point there, even though I wasn't able to see it. It seems like other people have seen that and posted pictures of it. So it does work on uh, units where you can get it to connect to your app. Is it OCPP compliant? Yes, it is. This is an OCPP compliant unit, which means it is eligible to participate in demand response programs. It does have to get certified for each specific program, but it at least it is OCPP compliant, so it should be able to do that. So it's gonna finish up the SMART category with 19 points. Next up, safety certified and warranty. It is safety certified, so it's not gonna lose any points there. It has a three year warranty. You get one point for every year the warranty is, so it gets three extra points. Finishing up that category with 18 points. That gives the Top Don Pulse Q a total of 88 points in our charger rater, which translates to 4.4 stars out of five. And while the Charger Rater is great at stacking up the points and spitting out a rating, I always offer my own personal rating, and then we average the two for the final score. I'm gonna give the Pulse Q a 3.5 stars out of five rating. We're gonna average those two out and come up with a total of 3.95 stars out of five, just shy out of four stars out of five. I actually do like the Pulse Q. It's a pretty good unit. I like the fact that it's NEMA 4 rated. I like the fact that they offer two different cable lengths. The connector holster is a good connector holster. The connector itself is a good connector. Uh, it was unfortunate we weren't able to pair this with the app. The cold weather cable performance is really bad. Um, but overall, they, they've got a pretty good unit here. And I think with some tweaks, it can actually be a very good charger. So um, before we leave today, let's take a quick look at the key hits and misses for the Pulse Q. Okay, let's take a look at the hits first. I think the price is pretty good. For $449, you get the 40 amp smart charger with a 16 foot cable though. And I, as I said earlier, I caution people from getting that. Make sure that you're certain that's going to be long enough for your use. If not, 
For $549, you get the 25 foot cable. Now for $549 to get a 40 amp Wi-Fi enabled smart charger, that's pretty good price. So that's on one of my hits. Secondly, it does have a NEMA 4 enclosure, which is a very good enclosure. It will protect the unit from driving rain and blowing snow. You could mount this thing anywhere you want and water and moisture will not get into the enclosure. I like the connector and the connector holster. They're both very good and uh, they're both made it on my hits list. They're probably above average. Now, as far as the misses go, I think that's pretty evident here. The automatic restart test failed. That's a big one for me because quite frequently we get power outages here. Even if it just flickers for a minute or so, the unit won't charge and uh, you wake up in the morning and it's not charged. The cold weather cable performance was really poor. Lost a point on the charger rater for that. This cable should not be used if you're charging your vehicles outdoor in cold weather areas this is not the right unit for you. And the app failure, we have to bring that up. I couldn't pair the app no matter how hard I tried. Tech support never called me back. Yes, it was over the holidays, but still that whole thing, even just how you set it up and how you pair it to your phone, I think it was a clunky procedure and the whole process to me was a failure. All right, well, that's all we have today for the Top Don Pulse Q. We hope that this review helped you make your decision on whether you're gonna buy one or not. If this is your first time here at State of Charge, please don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.